So this video is about electroplating copper on stainless steel. If you've ever searched the internet on this subject, you probably not find any options available for the home hobbyist to perform this action. The problem being that the copper will not stick to the stainless steel. But through an accidental discovery I made during my hobby chemistry activities, I may have found a way that works. I have a stainless steel spatula that I have been using in my lab for a couple of years. After one particular experiment, I noticed that it had become partially plated with copper. I thought this was interesting at the time, but I didn't pursue it any further. Sometime later, after I had done some experiments with plating zinc on copper pennies, I began to think about my stainless steel spatula again. So this is what it looks like now, and it has a brass type finish, which has a gold color, and I'm going to be explaining how I got it this way in this video. So uh, I thought it would be nice if I could get my spatula fully plated with copper to improve its appearance, as it had become very discolored with lots of use and exposure to high temperatures and many different chemicals. So after many attempts, I finally succeeded in my efforts to get a plating that would stick to the stainless steel. In this video, I attempt to show a reliable process that allows copper to be plated onto stainless steel. After getting the copper on, I will then add a layer of zinc to eventually form a nice brass coating that is a color that looks like gold. I'll be showing a couple of attempts that didn't work before I finally got the desired result. So let's get on with the video. What I am doing here is preparing a copper plating solution. I'm using 25 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and 5 grams of potassium bisulfate. These will be dissolved in distilled water to produce a final volume of about 450 milliliters. Then I will apply some heat and a magnetic stir bar to get everything dissolved into solution. Now that everything's dissolved, I'll remove the magnetic uh, stir bar with a magnet. Now I'm adding a copper anode that is shaped nicely to fit inside a 500 milliliter beaker. I've soldered a wire to the top of the anode and covered the solder with hot melt glue to prevent lead and tin from contaminating the solution. Here is a stainless steel butter knife that I will be using as the workpiece. I will suspend the knife in the plating solution using a wooden stick and a clothespin. I will be using a variable DC power supply with the voltage set to 1 volt. No more voltage is required for this process. I set up the current limit to 300 milliamps. I estimate this value will give a current density of approximately 106 milliamps per square inch of the workpiece. This value was chosen arbitrarily and may not be optimum. I connect the positive lead of the supply to the copper anode and the negative lead is connected to the workpiece.
After about five minutes in the plating bath, I disconnect the power supply and remove the knife. As I wipe the knife with a paper towel to dry it, I notice that the copper is not sticking to the knife. At this point, I have not succeeded in getting a satisfactory result. Here is a look at my stainless steel spatula that I have successfully plated with first copper then zinc to form a brass colored finish. So I start the experiment over by scraping and rubbing away the copper to restore the knife to the original state. I believe the tendency for the copper to stick to the spatula occurred after I had briefly dipped it into a hot solution of copper chloride. I just happened to have a flask with some copper chloride solution sitting around. I decided to put the copper chloride back into the original flask because I realized it would be easier to fully dip the knife into the solution. By tipping the flask, I could uh, immerse the entire knife blade into the solution. Some reaction occurs with the knife that happens very quickly. I think a replacement reaction is occurring where some metal or metals in the stainless steel is converted to metal chlorides and the copper is deposited onto the surface of the knife. I allow the reaction to occur for only about 10 seconds. Look at how much copper has been deposited on the knife. As I wipe the knife with a paper towel, the copper easily wipes away, but the surface of the knife has changed. It no longer has a shiny appearance, but is a dull gray color. This probably indicates that the surface has been etched. Now I prepare the knife for another run in the plating bath. So as I examine the knife, I notice that the finish is now very smooth and without uh, many blemishes. It looks like a very good job. As you can see, the copper does not rub off of the knife. Here are some close-up shots of the copper plating. It's looking good at this point.
Here I am preparing a zinc plating solution which consists of 13.5 grams of zinc chloride dissolved in water. This was taken from a stock batch of zinc chloride solution of known concentration. I also added 33.75 grams of potassium chloride powder and 5.18 grams of boric acid powder. I add distilled water to bring the volume up to 225 milliliters. I apply some heat and a magnetic stir bar to get everything dissolved. The boric acid is the slowest to dissolve into solution. After removing the stir bar, I then place a zinc anode into the beaker. The anode has a wire attached the same way as previously described for the copper anode. I connect the zinc anode to the positive voltage lead and the negative lead will be attached to the knife. I leave the knife in the plating bath for three or four minutes, which I discover later is way too long. I should have stopped after only about 30 seconds. Too much zinc will spoil the next step. At this point, the zinc plating is, is looking very smooth. I'm preheating the hot plate to heat the knife and convert the copper zinc plating to brass. I think because I have too much zinc over the copper, the color change is not the nice gold looking one that I desired. I'm about to make a mistake which ruins everything. I thought a little more heat from my heat gun would help the conversion to brass. Instead I end up melting the zinc and forming bubbles, which is a disaster. Although I didn't capture it on video, I ended up starting over by scraping and sanding off everything I had plated onto the knife, then repeating the entire process, including immersion of the knife in the hot copper chloride solution. I plated with copper for about 5 minutes, then zinc for about 30 seconds. So here I am repeating the heating process with the copper and zinc plating on the knife. This time the results are much nicer.
after having washed and polished the knife i saw no signs that the plating was going to rub off if you try this method let me know in the comments how it works for you maybe this will turn out to be a reliable method for hobbyists to plate onto stainless steel